This episode of Film Linen is brought to you by our Patreon page and all the members of our Wall of Awesome. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. So I posted a little short a couple of days ago called Grant Joins the X-Force. It was just this fun short that kind of just popped into my head while I was playing with my son. I thought, I could make that really easily. I wasn't planning on making a tutorial about it, but then the comment section. There might have been a few requests. <laughs> So, that's what we're doing today, guys. Now, I just want to explain the process of how I did this because it's actually pretty easy and some of you actually guessed in the comments section. As you guys know, that interview scene in Deadpool has a bunch of different people that are interviewed for the X-Force, and one of those happens to be Vanisher. You see where I'm going with this? So, of course, Vanisher gives us our clean plate of that shot because there's no one in that shot. So, we have a clean plate that we can use to remove any other person from that scene. And as you know, I removed Peter from the scene because I just had an idea for some interplay between myself, Deadpool, and Weasel, and the rest is kinda history. So that might lead to the question, how did I keep Dopinder in the scene as well? Well, the great thing about the shots with Peter is he stays right bang center in the frame and barely moves. So it's easy to cut him out using that clean plate of Vanisher while still keeping Dopinder in the scene. Now I will add, there is one point where Peter raises up his hand and actually crosses paths with Dopinder. So how did I solve that issue? Well, it's actually pretty easy. I simply timed my hand movements to go up when Peter's hands go up and then go down when Peter's hands go down. It's as simple as that. And that covered up Peter's hand crossing paths with Dopinder. Pretty easy, huh? So in order to complete this effect, guys, you've firstly got to shoot yourself on a green screen and two, you've got to match the lighting from the shot in Deadpool 2 as best you can. This is really important, guys, because it really does help to sell the effect better. And number three, do your best to match the shot slash camera placement of that scene in Deadpool 2. So either grab a reference still or grab the trailer and put it on your phone or your tablet and have that while you're working just to make sure that you've got everything lined up properly. You also need to head to filmlinen.com slash downloads and grab the Deadpool 2 background packs. Now this pack contains all the backgrounds that I've already removed Peter out of, so you're welcome. You got all that? Well, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I'm just gonna quickly show you how I actually built these shots in the original short. So we really only have four layers here. One, the chair that's in the foreground, me, uh, the Vanisher clean plate just down here that I've masked out, and of course the base layer with Peter in it. You add up all those shots together and we have our finished shot. But in the tutorial, I've made it even easier for you. So let's get started. Okay, so here's our project file. I've imported all the files in, as well as my green screen footage that I've already keyed out. So the first thing we need to do is select our background layer. Now I'm gonna go with BG3 because I know my shot matches up with this, and also because it's one that has Dopinder in it. Now we'll need to add our chair footage. Now before we do that, let's quickly set up the chair footage to loop because it's not very long and we don't wanna to have to duplicate it over and over. So to do that, let's right click on it and click interpret footage. We'll then set this to loop uh, around about 10 times. Done. We can now drag that into our comp and it'll go for the entire length of it. Next, let's bring in our green screen footage below our chair layer and let's move it into position and maybe scale it down to match our Peter reference. That looks pretty good. Now gang, I've already keyed this out since I don't think we need to go over keying again. So first off, I'm seeing a bit of a matte line just on the sleeve here that I'm not really loving. So let's quickly fix that with a matte choker from the preset menu over here. Let's just drag and drop that. Now all I'm gonna do here is say, bring the gray level softness up to 50%. And then I'm going to set the choke to to 5. And that looks better. Now from there, it's time to blend this into our background layer. Now personally, I think it needs some blur since I shot this in 4K. And I am shrinking it down and bringing it into a full HD shot. So it's going to look a little too sharp. So I'm going to head to effect, blur and sharpen and grab camera lens blur. Now I only need to just take the edge off that sharpness. So I'm going to do that by setting this to 0.5. Now guys, feel free to have a play with the blur amount and find the amount of blur that works for your shot. Our next step is really the thing that sells this. 
coloring. Now to color our key footage, I'm going to use Red Giant Colorista 4, but guys, feel free to use any color software or plugin you like. The principles here are the same. What we're looking to do is match the coloring of our reference footage, in this case, Peter, with our keyed footage. Now while the lighting and shot placement play their part, this really is a big component of selling yourself in the scene. So essentially what I'm doing is using the three color wheels here to kind of find a happy medium between highlights, midtones, and shadows to match Peter's look. It isn't particularly scientific, I'm not just sort of eyeballing it. I've seen some folks use the red, blue, and green channels and curves and stuff to do this, but personally, I kind of like doing it this way, so I'm used to it. That looks about done. Now guys, if I turn this on and off, you can see in the space of no time at all that I've done a pretty decent job at matching the coloring of this scene. And if we check out a preview, you can see that it works pretty well. And that's it gang, three main steps. Build the shot, add your keyed footage, and blend it. And that my friends, is another effect done. Just quickly guys, before I jump back to myself doing the whole add up all those steps thing, I just wanted to say that I've only included the background shots that I've modified in the download pack, as I've transformed them, which falls under fair use, but unfortunately I can't give you the speaking scenes with Deadpool and Weasel as I didn't actually modify them. So we're cool? Okay, let's get back to me now. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Last but not least. Grant. Any powers you want to tell us about? Any, uh... No. I just make tutorials on YouTube. So guys, that's how you insert yourself in the X4 scene of Deadpool 2. As you can see, once you remove Peter from the shot, it's actually a pretty easy process of getting yourself into that shot, as long as you match the lighting and the camera setup. Now guys, I will say this is probably one of the easier examples of how to insert yourself into a movie scene. We could cover some more advanced ones later on with some rotoscoping and whatnot, but just let me know if you want me to cover something like that down in the comment section. But for now guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got my social media crap with the Instagram and the Facebook and the Twitter and the Patreon right there. So feel free to click on those things too, guys. And until I see you again, keep learning.